would not go right on the deck to save it. One point game, final seconds. Bulls look for the win. DeRozan to win it. Go! DeMar DeRozan delivers! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Savage Sports fan, please like, share, subscribe. We're a new channel trying to get up and going. New subscribers, thanks for the love and support. Drop a comment, hit the bell notification, share a video. Listen, let's get right into it. You have seen it. First and foremost, listen, can we get a moment of silence for Skip Bayless? Can we get a moment of silence for Skip Bayless? Skip Bayless is sitting at home or sitting in FS1 studio and watching his co-host Shannon Sharp take over the world. Shannon Sharp has taken over the world, if you did not know. Uh, uh, he has Club Shay Shay, which is his podcast. You see him on ESPN with uh, the great Stephen A. Smith and everybody over there. And you got him in Nightcap, uh, Nightcap, which is his late night podcast with um, um, the great one, Chad Ocho Cinco, our, our homie, you know what I'm saying, from Miami, you know what I'm saying, in the place to be. But listen, I just, look, Shannon, I've always been a big Shannon Sharp fan, even when Shannon subbed, when Skip was on ESPN and Shannon came in for Stephen A. Uh, many, 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 many years ago. I, even I saw Shannon on CBS, Shannon just stood out. His vernacular, his style, uh, his delivery, you just saw it. But man, Shannon Sharp splits from FS1, what, last June, right after the NBA Finals? What, what was that, June? Remember, he had two months off. I don't even think he did his podcast. He needed a home for his podcast. So he already had Club Shay Shay established. So we'll say June, July, August, Shannon comes back in the mix, like right before football season, um, right after the pre, right, I think after the precinct going into, yep, September. Here we are from September to now. So you September, October, November, December, like man, four, four and a half, five months, maybe, maybe four and a half months, something like that. And Shannon Sharp has taken over the internet. If you did not see the interview between Shannon and Cat Williams yesterday, Cat Williams, the great legendary comedian who does not sit down very often. He sat down with Shannon Sharp yesterday and I kind of knew it was going to be a good interview. But did I think Shannon Sharp and Cat Williams would be rocking the, the entertainment world the way they are now? You need to go check this interview out. He, Cat Williams talked about everything from Steve Harvey to um, Kevin Hart, um, Cedric the Entertainer. He touched on a lot of Dave Chappelle, Bla Michael Blackson. He touched on a lot of different topics for over two hours, two and a half hours of just, I mean, just owning a room. And one might say, Cat Williams, if you never saw what a free man looks like, you need to check out the conversation with Cat Williams. He is speaking as a free man, would not be bought and sold, not playing the political game, not just not just doing it his way. And should he be larger than what he is now? One, yeah, yeah. After this interview, I don't think anybody has interviewed doing it like this compared to the new media, new media, which is YouTube. New media is the internet. New media is social media. No one has rocked the world like this right now. So whatever he didn't get in the past, he will get going forward. I'll say that. But Skip Bayless, FS1. I mean, look, every relationship runs its course. You grow together, you grow apart, you learn from the errors of your ways. I'm pretty sure Shannon thought, thought about some things he would have did differently at FS1. But what's done is done. Shannon is moving up and Skip is moving down. <laughs> Shannon's, in, Shannon's in the penthouse and it looks like uh, uh, Skip is going to be in a studio apartment somewhere because it's almost like Skip who? Skip what? And Keyshawn is my homie. I think Keyshawn should have his own show. I think Keyshawn's show will pull better numbers um, if he dropped off Skip Bayless at the old folks' home. 
I think uh, Keyshawn will really kind of come into his own. Would he be as big as Shannon? I don't know. But I think he will do better numbers if he got rid of Skip Bayless. And I think the uh, powers that be over at FS1, they know that too. But they have an obligation and a commitment to Skip Bayless because he put them on the map. He was an established name when they were in startup mode. Skip and Colin came in there and kind of put a stamp on it. Stamp on it. So that kind of, you know, they have some type of... Um, professional obligation to, to to skip Bayless but they got to be looking at these numbers <laughs> it's all about the numbers baby when they looking at these Shannon Sharp numbers Shannon Sharp has given a blueprint of from sports to entertainment but listen it all starts with an amazing personality Shannon's got that personality bruh the vernacular the intellect but it's the you know it's it's many educated men out there but they just can't deliver it with the humor that shannon does so he has just transcended sports entertainment he is just he's going to be on that mount rushmore of sports media and they like hated or love it hated or love it no one has done it like he since he's left there now he's on espn and now he's doing his own thing and he is partnered with Colin Cowherd so that is with the volumes network that they are doing this uh broadcast and YouTube deal on that particular um platform but they've given Shannon to the the green light to just go with it and it's just beautiful to watch I just had to do a video saying thank you Shannon he's showing us all the blueprint shout out to Cam Cameron Giles and uh Mace Mason Mace Bethel over there to, uh, come talk to me it is what it is so they have kind of set it off for 2024 to let you know this is how this thing needs to go down and um no knock against skip skip did a lot of great things skip put a lot of people on skip is still skip i still love skip bayless but these numbers man whoo what have you done for me lately that was an old janet jackson song what have you done for me lately and let me tell you man fs1 do they crawl back to shannon <laughs> i know he has a deal over there with espn but you know money talks does fs1 run back to shannon in another six months and say hey man these numbers man i don't know man we made a mistake can you can you know because you know they have to have some type of sports broadcasting convention meeting and they all, all the sports networks get together for functions. That's usually the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is when you see all the media kind of get together. The Super Bowl is going to be in Las Vegas this year. So you better believe the uh, the big wigs over at FS1 going to run into Shannon Sharp. And they're going to be like, oh, so congratulations on your success. You know, down the road, maybe we'll talk. Down the road, down the road, maybe you can throw us a life preserver. You know, they're going to be on some uh, kissing up to Shay Shay. You feel me? So I'm just throwing that out there that don't be shocked, you know, if they come running back to Shannon down the road. I wouldn't be shocked. Anything can happen. But at the end of the day, with numbers like this, ESPN has got to be trying to figure out how we can get this on their platform but at the end of the day like shannon said many weeks ago they he don't think that you could talk the way and have an open candid conversation on any any fcc airwaves so to speak so i think club shay shay and um nightcap it is where it needs to be so could they do something like this on tv maybe a watered down version but it just wouldn't be the same I don't think the numbers would be the same. It goes viral too fast on YouTube. But at the end of the day, congratulations to Shannon Sharp. Congratulations to Cat Williams. All the people to cat call strays out there. I'm so sorry. I'm so Chris Tucker. Um, Kevin Hart. Um, Ricky Smiley. Lord have mercy. I Cat Williams said in his contract, he worked with Ricky Smiley on some T on some movie and it didn't go the way he thought. And Cat Williams said in his contract going forward, if he ever worked with Ricky, Ricky Smiley, Ricky Smiley must be in a dress. Man, that's a. <laughs>
Man, that's owning somebody. And then you saw him in a dress in another movie. But that, I mean, hey, look, man. 2024, we just getting started. We not even five days in. Hey, I got a smile on my face. Shannon Sharp, thank you. He's blessing the internet with a lot of stuff to talk about, as well as Cat Williams. Um, check out the interview. This is Savage Sports Fan. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, I do agree. The Lakers have quit on Darvin Ham. The Lakers have quit on Darvin Ham. Jimmy Butler did not play last night when the Miami Heat came to the place. And uh, they were owning the Lakers. Easy. Without Jimmy Buckets out there giving them buckets. So, in the next 10 games, just expect Darvin Ham to be escorted from the, um, from the dressing room. So, the Lakers have officially quit on Darvin Ham. I do, I do agree. LeBron James, the leader, don't have fire in his eyes, not, not falling behind the coach. He's being passive aggressive again. And LeBron is just, one can argue, you know, another coach bites the dust under LeBron James's resume. He, another, another coach is just not going to make it, you know. So maybe they should let LeBron coach this team. Let LeBron, since he got all the answers, let LeBron coach. But at the end of the day, it, it appears that the Los Angeles Lakers have quit on Darvin Ham. Um, Jeannie Buss is going to have to, you know. But another thing no one's talking about is they want to blame Darvin Ham for everything. But listen, the Lakers have some amazing assistant coaches. Some amazing assistant coaches. So let's not act like the Lakers are some clam chowder sitting on the uh, on that bench over there. The Lakers got some really, I think they brought in Mike Boosner. I mean, the one that walked out on uh, Milwaukee uh, the day before the season, who, who coached, not Mike Boosner, I'm sorry, uh, Terry Stout. Terry Stout, who was coaching over in Portland for many years. They got, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Kerry, uh, Terry is on that bench now. Uh, along with a lot of other really accomplished, s smart basketball minds. So the Lakers, I, I, just blaming Darvin, Darvin got good people surrounding him. So he's just going to be a scapegoat here. He's going to get this. He's going to, you know, he's going to be the Chris Bosch of all of this. So at the end of the day, LeBron is still on your team and he's still a billionaire ball player and can't nobody check him. So unless you bring in somebody in to check LeBron James, a year and a half from now, it's going to be another coach getting the axe. Until you hire somebody that can actually check LeBron James. It does not matter who your coach is going to be. They got accomplished coaches on that on that on that bench. Nobody can check that billionaire, and they not making them play hard on defense, and they not yelling at them in the huddle, and there go your problem, Genie. Get you a coach that can care less about that dude's bank, uh, 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 his stock options and all his movie role, and he has a percentage of this TV show. No one really cares. We're here to play ball. And uh, if you're trying to win or you're not, you are in Tinseltown. Uh, it does not matter until you get you somebody like Phil Jackson, who used to take a timeout and curse out Shaq, take a timeout and curse out Michael, take a timeout and curse out Scotty, and take a timeout and bench Will Purdue, and take a timeout and yell at Ron Harper. Phil Jackson didn't care. He didn't care. He used to give uh, uh, Kukos the business. He used to give Scotty the business. He used to yell at though. He look, look at just many YouTube videos. You can see uh, Phil Jackson screaming at Shaq all in his face. Shaq got his head down. This is after they won two rings. After they won three rings. So you got to get that type of fiery on the bench. But we are in a different era right now, ladies and gentlemen. And no one can check him. And this is what you get. But anyway, drop a comment. Who should the Lakers hire? I said it's going to be Doc Rivers probably on that sideline. They tried to get Doc Rivers two years ago. Doc Rivers is unemployed. I think Doc Rivers can still say something to LeBron. I don't know if he could check LeBron, but he could tell something to LeBron. And so... At the end of the day, another one bites the dust. Drop a comment. This is Savage Sports Fan. Shout out to Shannon Sharp.
Shout out to Cat Williams. Um, it is what it is. Shout out to Cam. Until next time, I'm out.